The anti-ice and rain systems keep critical areas of the airplane clear of ice or rain. Engine cowls are heated by engine bleed air. The three outboard leading edge slats are heated by bleed air. Flight deck windows and all probes are heated electrically. Let's turn our attention to the flight deck windows. The windshields are anti-iced and anti-fogged. The side windows are electrically heated for anti-fogging only. Continuous conditioned air flows along the inside surface of the forward window to provide supplemental anti-fogging. This airflow works independently of the electric window heat. The window heat controls are on the overhead panel. The left and right forward switches control the heat to anti-ice and anti-fog the forward windows. The left and right side switches control the heat to anti-fog the side windows. The in-op lights illuminate when the window is not being heated. Let's activate heat to all windows. Turn on the switches to heat the flight deck windows. The system is now on and the temperature is automatically controlled. If an overheat or fault in the system occurs, the system automatically removes power to the malfunctioning window. If power is removed from a selected window, an ICAS advisory message displays and the in-op light to the selected window illuminates. If two or more in-op lights illuminate, a single window heat message displays. If a window overheats, you may reset the system by positioning the affected switch off. Leaving the switch off for a minimum of 10 seconds allows the window to cool to its normal operating temperature. Now reset the affected switch by pushing it off then back to on. The ICAS advisory message disappears and the in-op light extinguishes, indicating that the system has been reset. Heat is now restored to the window. After resetting the system, if the ICAS message is still displayed and the in-op light remains illuminated, place the affected window heat switch to off. If a window arcs or is damaged, you should remove power to the window by positioning the affected switch off. Remove power to the damaged window now. When power is removed, the in-op light illuminates. Window arcing, shattering, or cracking do not necessarily require a change in airplane or cabin altitude. However, if the window deforms or an air leak is observed above 10,000 feet, Descend to the lowest safe altitude or 10,000 feet, whichever is higher. Plan to land at the nearest suitable airport. Let's examine probe heat. Electrical power provides heat to each of the airplane's probes. Probe heat is fully automatic and operates when either engine is running. Probe heat indicator lights are on the overhead panel. There is a probe heat light for each probe. Prior to engine start, all the probe lights illuminate. When either engine is started, all the probe heat lights extinguish, indicating the system is operating normally. 
If power to a probe fails, an ICAST message displays and the affected probe heat light illuminates, indicating which probe malfunctioned. A single probe heat message displays when two or more probe heat lights illuminate. During icing conditions, failure of any probe may cause flight instruments to malfunction. This airplane has an advisory ice detection system. An ice detecting sensor is installed on the nose of the airplane. When the sensor detects ice, the amber icing light illuminates and the ICAS advisory message, Ice Detector On, displays. When the sensor no longer detects ice, the icing light extinguishes and the ICAS advisory message, Ice Detector Off, displays. The system operates in an advisory capacity only. Crew action is required to activate and deactivate the engine and wing anti-ice systems. After ice buildup has been detected, the crew activates the engine anti-ice using the switches on the anti-ice panel. Similarly, wing anti-ice is activated by the wing anti-ice switch. Wing and engine anti-ice controls are located here. Engine anti-ice is controlled through these two switches. Position the engine anti-ice switches to on and note the indications. The on position commands the valves open, allowing operation of the system both on the ground and in flight. The engine anti-ice systems are independent. This allows the other system to operate should an engine fail. Engine anti-ice operation is indicated here by the green TAI annunciation. The respective TAI symbol is displayed whenever the associated engine anti-ice valve is open. Corrections to maintain required N1 limits are made automatically. Continuous ignition is automatically activated when an engine anti-ice switch is turned on and the engine start selector is in auto. The valve light illuminates if there is a disagreement between the anti-ice switch and the Cal anti-ice valve position. If a Cal anti-ice valve fails, the left or right engine anti-ice ICAS message is displayed. Wing anti-ice is controlled by a single selector. As you may recall, engine bleed air provides heat to de-ice or anti-ice the three outboard leading edge slats. In flight, pushing the wing anti-ice switch on commands the wing anti-ice valve in each wing to open. When open, the anti-ice valve permits bleed air to flow to the three outboard leading edge slats. System logic inhibits all wing anti-ice operation on the ground. System logic inhibits all wing anti-ice operation on the ground. As with the engine anti-ice, a disagreement between the wing anti-ice switch and valve positions will illuminate the appropriate valve light. And the left or right wing anti-ice message displays, indicating a failure of the associated wing anti-ice valve.
the pilot's windshields are treated with a hydrophobic coating. The coating inhibits surface wetting and causes water droplets to roll off with minimal wind. As speed increases, so does the effectiveness of the coating. The windshield wiper controls are located here. The forward windows are equipped with three speed wipers. Each wiper is controlled by its own selector. The off position stows the wipers at the base of the windows. The intermittent position operates the wipers with a short delay between wipes. Low operates the wipers continuously at low speed, while High selects high speed. To avoid scratching the outer windshield surface, do not operate the wipers on dry windshields. During the first officer preflight, ensure the selectors are in the off position.